We want to welcome all to His Glory Ministry as we uh, start a new book in our Bible studying. Um, it's 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Uh, as you recall, we just finished up 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. That was Paul's message to the, third, uh, the church of Thessalonica. And uh, in between, um, there was some false prophets that came into Thessalonica. And they had uh, some serious concerns on the church. And the concerns were, one, was Paul teaching uh, teachings the truth, the living word of God? And also, did they, uh, possibly, did they miss the rapture of the church, the harpazo? So this is the purpose for Paul to write Second Thessalonians to the uh, chapter 1, 2, and 3. We'll get through all those. Uh, they're relatively short. We'll stop at each one and start again. Um, so that was the purpose of Paul to write to, to them, to, to show them that, A, they didn't miss it, and, and B, what I told you was from uh, Theos, from God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and to persevere and get through the trials and tribulations. And the remnant did exactly as that, uh, as he said. So before we get any further, as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be the true teacher in the living word of God, which is our Savior, Christ the Lord. Okay, so when we get into 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, this is where Paul is going to review the, 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 the events that are going to uh, take place. The, the revealing of the Antichrist, uh, the harpazo of the church, and the Holy Spirit going up. And uh, when we get to that, we'll get, to, we'll, uh, get deeper into that. But the first, uh, 2 Thessalonians tonight, uh, chapter 1. Here we go. Paul, Silas, uh, Silvius, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in Theos, our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. And so he's saying, in the name of. Grace to you and peace from Theos, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He says the grace is coming from, from the Lord and from the Father, not from him. So he's saying, my, my teaching is coming from them. I'm not taught by man. I am inspired spiritually through the spiritual wisdom that can only come from Jesus Christ, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, not my intellectual wisdom. He learned that the hard way, as we said before. He was, uh, Paul was studied under Galileo. Galileo was the, the leader of the law. And uh, there's been some uh, recent archaeology findings uh, just within the last year that show that uh, Paul most likely was going to take the place of Galileo and become the leader of the, of, of the, uh, the church, or not the church, the, the leader of of, of the teacher of the law after Galileo was done. So he, he studied, he had his PhD in uh, Judaism, but it was all intellectual up here. And he's showing you that Jesus Christ is a love relationship. And when he saw Jesus on the road to Damascus, he was taken outside, uh, he was taken out to uh, Arabia for three years and he trained through a spiritual, or, uh, a spiritual seminary that came from God the Father and the, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. That's why when we look at Paul's uh, 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 greetings to the church, we, we sometimes we go through those quickly, and same as uh, genealogy. But God always puts nuggets inside those, th those greetings and um, those genealogies. That's why it says all scriptures God breathes for our doctrine and edification, not just some, even the greetings and even the, the genealogies. So in, the, in, these gene, or in these greetings, he's saying all authority comes from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm not ordained by a particular uh, denomination. I'm not ordained by man. No, I have the wisdom of the Spirit, not from my own self, for myself, from myself, but the Spirit of wisdom can only come from God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. God, through Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the living Word, the literal Word of God. He is the living Word of God. And the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher, praise His name. Verse 3, we are bound to thank Theos always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love, the love every one of you all abounds towards each other. So he's saying we're bound to thanks by God, giving them thanks that the brethren, as they, their faith is growing. Remember, the first letter was they were new in the body of the church. They were, they, they were as Paul would say, the analogy of they were still uh, drinking milk. They weren't ready for solid food. They weren't ready to 
get deeper uh, spiritual wisdom. They were just new in their faith. But he's saying it's growing and it's growing exceedingly, the knowledge. What and how? It's from the Holy Spirit. And then what it's, the truth that's coming is being matched with what Paul said, but it's the Holy Spirit is, is showing them the wisdom that can only come from the Lord. And we're going to see that the church went through some serious trials and tribulations for the, for the sake of the Most High God. And uh, that's exactly what's happening to us as well. So that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of Theos for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. He says we, 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 we pray and boast because of what you're doing for God, Theos, with all the persecutions that's building your patience, it's building your pay, your, your, your um it's building your faith through the trials and tribulations. So this church and these members, this remnant of the church of Thessalonica, were going through trials and tribulations in the name of the Lord. Remember we said earlier that there was false prophets coming. They were, Satan was trying to destroy this church. Satan is trying to destroy them from getting more wisdom, the spiritual wisdom that the, the Word of God gives you and the Holy Spirit gives you. That's why Satan does not want you to read the Bible. That's why he is using any, any form of deception and distraction he possibly can to keep you away from Bible study, to keep you from away from the Word of God, to keep you away from prayer, to keep you away from putting your heart on the Lord. Because Satan knows once the, the, a believer in Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit indulges themselves in the Word of God and the Holy Spirit through prayer, then that's when the spiritual wisdom comes and they become stronger and stronger in the trials and tribulations build patience, and patience builds more, uh, more faith, and more faith, more love, and faith and love go hand in hand with the Lord our God. And Jesus said, it's not if you'll have trials and tribulations for my name's sake, you will, because the world hated me before it hated you. So if you are a true church of the Lord, and again, the church is not a physical building. Yes, this is in Thessalonica, but it wasn't in a, a Thessalonica church with a name on it. It was, in, it was in the believers' houses, and they would rotate them. The church, nothing wrong with having a beautiful building for the church as long as the priorities are number one. That is God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, our priority one through ten, and doing what Christ told us to do before he left. What did he tell his disciples? Go preach the gospel from east to west and north to south to every creation and creature on the face of the earth. That is the call. We are called to bring people to Christ. So if the church uh, is uh, in a building and the number one priority is not love of Christ and bringing in the harvest, then you're probably in the wrong church. They had their priorities uh, mixed up. And I don't say that from a man speaking. I'm saying that from listening and being obedient to what Christ told us to do. The church is us and the church goes wherever we go and the glory of the Lord will shine through us through his light. And his, we are that beacon of light, and we are the church. We are the ecclesia. We can go into any building, go into any room, and the church goes with it because the church is the bride of Christ. And we will have trials and tribulations for his namesake because we are a threat to Satan. So if you're not having trials and tribulations for his namesake, you probably don't have God's will uh, activated in your life. And it's important that you have your, his will activated in your, in your life because that's the only thing that matters in this world. The world is a test. It's a double test, as we've said many, many times. First test is we were born into sin. We were born separated from God because of the blood, uh, S-I-N positive in our bloodstream from Adam and Eve. That's, that's the way it was. We were born away from God. And we had to choose our free will choice of faith and love through Jesus Christ, through our free will. Do we love him? accept that free gift and repent of our sins and say, I can't do it, and be washed away. Your sins will be as scarlet, washed as way, way, white as snow. That's step one, salvation. Do we, once we've done that, we're going to go home to be with the Lord forever, no matter what the world throws at us. Our home is on the high, and we're just a passing flower. It's, it, world, time goes by fast, and we're here to endure. We are here to gain salvation, number one, and number two, we start, once salvation hits, exactly what's happening in the church of Thessalonica in here, they were born again and they were new. So now they're going through their sanctification process, their wilderness where their trials and tribulations are coming against them because Satan's trying to get them out of the word and they're enduring. They're overcoming through their faith and their patience and they're getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger in the name of the Lord. That's called the sanctification process. 
We go to the wilderness period or the sanctification process where we have to give up self for his glory. And that's where God works with us. He teaches us. He gives us spiritual wisdom. He, he builds us up that we're not drinking spiritual milk anymore, that we're ready for solid food. And each progression, we get to another step, another step, another step, another step, until he's got us ready to use us for his purpose and for his glory. Praise his name. And that's what the church of Thessalonica is doing here. Verse 5. Um, it, it, so his tribulations that you endure in, in chapter 4. We have to endure Finish the race. Do not deny his name. Do not deny his word. Yes, it's going to be trials and tribulation. Yes, it's going to be hard. And you know, you think you, you, you walk your way even through the sanctification process that it's going to be easy. And, you know, I'm looking at 2016. And I've been in the ministry since 2012. This is the fourth year of the, his glory ministry. And each year it's getting harder and harder and harder because Satan knows the power of this ministry called by the name of the Most High. It's his ministry. And he knows the millions and millions of people that it's literally reaching and how God is going to activate this in 2017 and a huge spiritual revival is going to go on all over the world in the name of his glory. And there'll be many his glories popping up all over the world and spreading the gospel exactly the way Christ told us to do it. So we're a threat to Satan. And that's why 2016 has probably been one of the toughest years we've had uh, as a ministry because we just get attacked and attacked and attacked. And I have the expectation that I give it to the Lord, I trust in the Lord, I go through the trials and tribulations for his namesake, but we do what the, the church of, of Thessalonica did, endure, endure, stay steadfast, endure, finish the race, continue to do what the Lord has called you to do. And you fight the battle, you, you gut through it. And that's what we're doing here. We're going to gut through it for the Lord because the trials and tribulations are because Satan does not want this ministry to reach the world. It's bringing thousands and thousands of people to Christ in. Each month, uh, our partner in uh, Pakistan, I got an update uh, just over for Christmas, uh, they, they brought 8,132 people to Christ last month alone. Praise the name. Praise them. Praise them. And these are all coming... The majority of these are coming from Muslim nations that, were, that had traditions of a different religion are now finding who the true living Christ is and that he's not a prophet. He is the King of kings and the Lord of hosts, the Son of God and God in the second head, and he is the literal way, the truth, and the life. Praise his name. So we endure. Verse 5, which is manifest as evidence of the righteous judgment of Theos that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for, you were, for which you also suffer. God is testing us in the fire every single day. And every single day he's asking us this question, how much do you trust me? How much do you love me? How much are you going to give to me? Because it is, a, it is an absolute war out there, especially if you are a threat to Satan as the church here is a threat to Satan, as his glory ministry is a threat to Satan. And we got to trust in the Lord and endure. Keep going. When, we're, when we can't make it, we just keep going and keep going and keep going. The Lord told me one of the reasons he's, he, he used this knucklehead, me, the least likely of all people to be running a ministry, a worldwide ministry, he says, he says, that's why I made you a Marine, my son. You know how to endure physical and mental, to overcome, adapt, and, 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 and hold steadfast and not break your will and continue to rely on me instead of self. Me, I will get you through that. It's through the Lord, praise his name. And so, there, uh, and since it's, it is a righteous thing with Theos to repay with tribulation those who trouble you. So there is going to be justice done to those who, who come and, uh, and uh, give you trials and tribulations for his namesake. The scales will be judged, and we know that uh, in, the white, in the white throne judgment. And that's what Paul is starting to go to and talking about the time of the coming of the Messiah, the coming of Christ, the, the Goel, which is the blood redeemer, the kinsman redeemer, with his angels and his saints. That's what he's referring, referring to. There will be a judgment day, and retribution of the tribulations will come upon each in person uh, because of what you endured. And remember, that's the five crowns. All of them are based of love. All of them are based on doing things for his purpose, for his glory, and, and walking hand in hand with him, not running in front of him or ahead of him, 
or sitting back eating Cheetos on the couch. God wants us to participate and act and, and listen to him and listen to his voice and for his calling and his will in our life. And we, do the, we, we, we finish the race. Verse 7, and to give you who are troubled rest with us with the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. We're not going to get rest until what Paul says right here in verse 7. There's no rest for the, for the saints. If we're called for, that, if for Christ's name, we can't even get a breath. And I was thinking this the other day. I said, Lord, when am I going to get a break? When, when can I just catch a breath? Just, just a little bit of breath. There's no breath. We have to endure. We got to keep coming. And the breath is going to be, as Paul says here, the spiritual from spiritually from the Lord is when Christ comes back, when he comes back to grab the, the, the remnant of his church after the harpazo and after the end of the tribulation with his angels and his saints. That's where it says, us with the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, referring to the second coming of Jesus Christ as the Goel and the, and the end time of revelation to put an end to this tribulations and nonsense and usher in the Davidic covenant for a thousand year reign to fulfill the Davidic covenant and be the king of kings and lord of hosts. Verse 8, and flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God, those who denied Theos, they had every opportunity to know Theos. The scripture tells us that every man, woman ever born has had the opportunity to know who the Messiah is. And they passed, whether it was hardened of heart, whether it was tradition, whether it was for the world that they wanted to live or they thought they could do it um, themselves and didn't need the Most High through the Son, Jesus Christ. There will be a judgment. That's the white throne judgment. That's what Paul is referring to here. And on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, do not obey. God wants us to love him, accept him, re repent to Jesus, accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and be obedient. Be obedience comes with that. If you're not obedient, then you're not in love relationship with the Lord. Yes, we all fall short of the glory of love or of God. And we are not always obedient. We, 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 we sin. And that's where we have to catch ourselves and, and ask for forgiveness. First John 1 John 1.9, it's Christians by our soul. We, we, we confess our sins and he, and he is faithful and true and he'll forgive our sins from heaven. So that's when we get back on the right track. We edify. We, we, we learn from our mistake, our sin. And yes, there's a repercussion for, for it. But we get right back on and we stay in the Lord. And that's what Paul's telling us to do. And to obey the gospel. Again, the gospel is the Christ. It's the good tidings, the good news. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died according to the scriptures, was buried, and then the third day arose again according to the scriptures and is the right hand of the Father and is the Son of God and God in the second head, and he is the only way to eternal life through the Son. He is the I am that I am at the burning bush. Praise his name. Verse 8, in flaming fire taking vengeance, as we said, the vengeance will come of the Lord at the end of the tribulations. Verse 9, this shall be punished in everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. They all will bow down and acknowledge they got it wrong that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of hosts. And all from the glory and, the, uh, and of his power. Glory here is doxa. In the, in the Hebrew, again, it's kabod means his glory, literally, the glory of the Lord, the essence of who he is, will see his power, and they'll bow down and say, we missed it. We absolutely missed it, and it was because of our hardened heart. It was because of whatever reason, or tradition, or living for the world, or whatever the reasons that, that, that are. The rich man is in the book of uh, Luke in chapter 16, where he, he, he said, Father Abraham, go warn my brothers. He was in Sheol. He, he, he knew he got it wrong, and he knew who... Who the, the, who the, how to get to heaven, and he, and he failed. And he didn't at, at any time say I was wrongly charged. They will know that the charges are just, and justice will prevail, and they'll know, yes, because they'll see it on their screen. They'll see a replay of their life at the white throne judgment, and they'll see the times they had the opportunity, and they didn't do it because of pride, didn't do it because of tradition, didn't do it because of self or hardened of heart or whatever the multiple reasons may be. God has given himself up for his son. So the son is the way, the truth, and the life. And the son is for us. And they had an opportunity and they denied him. Verse 10, when he comes, 
in that day to be glorified in his saints. And that day he comes, in the end of the tribulation, at the end of the seven years of the tribulation, he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe. Admired. The saints, again, will be coming down with the Lord on white horses, and just glory will take over the whole earth as our King of Kings and Lord of Hosts is going to usher in the, tribula- the end of the tribulation and enter the, the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ with limited sin and his glory being with us. And then after the thousand years, Satan is thrown into the lake of fire. The white throne judgment is opened up the books, the names are removed, and we usher in the tabernacle for eternity with the Lord. Praise his name. Because of our testimony among who you believe. Because of the testimony of who you believe. And when we spread the, the gospel of the Lord... We just are to plant a seed. We don't throw a Bible in somebody's face and try to to convince them. We don't convince anybody of anything. We just walk in love and light, and we give our own testimony, and we plant the seed to a non-believer. We plant the seed and let the Holy Spirit, God the Father, and Jesus Christ grow it through through their watering and their their light to make that seed grow within them. Nobody's going to come to Christ when you throw a Bible in front of their face. That's being aggressive. We do it with love. We plant a seed with our testimony. This is why I believe. This is why I have complete confidence that when my days are done, I'm going to spend eternity with heaven. Not only does the scripture say, but look what I'll give you X, Y, Z that's happened in my life. Me in particular, God has done so many supernatural miracles, I, I, I don't even know where to begin. But the, the first key to, to, to me was with my two near-death experiences. He showed me heaven. There's no doubt. And he talked to me during the whole process. And he showed me my whole life, literally, phases of my life passed before me. And after this, I asked for confirmation to see a vision of Jesus. And he did that. So I've seen the risen Christ. I have seen what's on the other side. And nothing anyone says is going to stop me from going where my home is and doing all the things I need to do for my King of Kings and Lord of hosts until he takes me home. Praise his name. Uh, Verse 11. Therefore, we also pray always for you that our Theos would be count you worthy of this calling. Again, your calling is your will. Count you worthy, meaning preparation, getting through the sanctification, humbling yourself so that you can be formed by the potter. Your clay can be formed to be used for his purpose that he has for you in your life. Each purpose of each believer is different. The last thing you want to do is have salvation of the Lord and sit there and eat Cheetos and get to the Obama seat and say, I have no reward. I did nothing with it. I did nothing with the talents and the, wis- and the, and the, and the, and the will that you had for me, Lord, in my life. That will be the tear of regret that we'll have, and we don't want to have that. We want to run the race, as Paul says, find the will of the Lord, humble ourselves, seek his face, and all that seek his face will know his will, the scripture tells us, and fulfill all the good pleasures, pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, and it, with all the good pleasure of his goodness. It's his goodness, not our goodness. We were born sin nature. There's nothing good about us. We were spared by grace. And it's the goodness only comes from the Lord through his son, Jesus Christ. But he's going to show his goodness and the work of faith and power. And that faith and power can only come from the Lord. Our faith comes because we love him and we've given it up to him. And we'll see the goodness of the Lord for eternity. Praise his name. And we close out in uh, uh, 12, verse 12, in 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 1. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ... Lord here is Kairos. Kairos in the Greek means highest, highest supreme in charge, captain, no higher in, in command. And Jesus Christ, is his, Jesus is his name. Jesus in, in, in Hebrew is Yeshua. And the Christ means the anointed one in the Greek. And the, in the Hebrew is, is, uh, is, is Messiah. Messiah and Christ are the same name. Messiah is Hebrew, Greek, in the Greek, it is Christ, and they both mean in both languages the anointed one, the one from God, the Son of God, and God in the second head. May be glorified in you. So Christ being glorified in us, so that Christ literally becomes a part of us when we accept him and we activate him 
and we give up ourselves for his purpose and our life and our heart and our soul, and we work with him and you and him according to the grace of our God. It's always by the grace. That grace in the Greek is more than just a free gift, but it's a piercing of the, it's a, a circumcision of the heart that we have accepted him in our heart and we're born again. We are given a new heart and that's where we're born again. We are a new soul and spirit that will live forever with the most high. And that grace of our theos, and that can only come from theos, and our kairos, Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise his name. And we pray that 2 Thessalonians uh, 1 has been a blessing to you. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you too next time in chapter 2. Thank you.